My Saturday morning started as usual. I woke up early with my wife of six years, and we went for a walk in the park near our house. We were both in our twenties, fit, attractive, and most importantly, happy. Andy and I have been in love since childhood. We were each other's first and probably our last. Even though I had studied every part of her body and knew it like my own, I was still mesmerized by her beauty. She had what most people called an athletic figure, a toned body, narrow waist and hips, and small, neat breasts. I, too, probably fit the description of athletic, only the male version, tall, slender, with broad shoulders. Andy threw her long, dark hair over her shoulder and looked at me. Matt, you're staring at me, she said shyly. I laughed and kissed her. Sorry, I can't resist. She took my hand and we slowly walked along the path in the park. We passed a billboard on the other side of the park where five imposing men stood proudly with their chests puffed out and their hands on their hips. Andy stopped and read the text below. Oh my God, she exclaimed. The Invincibles are organizing a parade in the city. I laughed. I thought they were busy stopping or winning wars somewhere. Andy elbowed me in the side. That's what the parade is for, stupid. They defeated the demon twins and saved an entire city. Matt, we have to see this. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I gave her an evasive answer and took her away from the board. To be honest, I didn't care at all about seeing the Invincibles. These were just five people in suits, around whom an entire industry was built. Sure, they had abilities and they saved people, but doctors, firefighters, and police officers do this every day. Where is their parade? I tried to have this conversation with Andy several times. This was one of the rare things we disagreed on. She, like the rest of the world, was fascinated by a new breed of people born with powers similar to comic book superheroes. We returned to our cabin and Andy made us breakfast. Our home was our pride. We've put all our effort into him over the years and have been close to thinking about getting a couple of little rascals to complete our nest. Andy was an elementary school teacher and I was a programmer, so we lived comfortably and working with children made her dreamier about children. She had stopped taking the pills a while ago, so we were ready to take the next step. I put away the breakfast dishes and Andy gave me one of her lustful looks. She walked into the living room with her hips swaying and sat down on our couch. I immediately forgot about the plates. Afterwards, we collapsed together and enjoyed the bliss. Life was good. At work on Monday, all I heard was talk about the Invincibles coming to town. It was starting to get on my nerves, but I smiled and nodded while the grown men chatted like children. Towards the end of the day, as I was getting ready and waiting for Andy, Jerry, Beth, and Ryan were arguing about news they had seen on social media. I heard that foe killed 20 people and set fire to an entire factory of illegal substances. No, it was ice. I would choose PHP over ice in a fight. Andy walked over and heard the end of the argument. If I had to choose, I would choose Omega. These two are weaklings compared to him. Ryan rolled his eyes. Obviously, but that doesn't count, right? Who would you choose, Matt? I laughed. I would choose Phantom to disappear and not answer these stupid questions. They laughed, and I left with Andy. For the next five days, at home and at work, all I heard was talk about the Invincibles. I couldn't believe that such smart people were so susceptible to the media hysteria around them. When Andy spent the whole dinner talking about them coming to town, I finally said, Andy, let's talk about something else, please. I understand that you adore them, but you know what I think, and I don't want to hear about them from my wife all the time. Andy frowned. Don't be so jealous. They are heroes. I listen to you admire your favorite boxer, or when your team wins, why can't you do the same for me? Because it only happens for one day. Honestly, you haven't stopped talking about them since you found out they were coming to town. I rubbed my eyes. Sorry, maybe you're right. The parade is this Saturday. I'll wait until then. I tried to hug her, but received a cold shoulder. No, you ruined everything. I was so excited, and you ruined everything. 
I continued and eventually she gave up. I hugged her and kissed the top of her head. Sorry, I'll try to be better, honestly. We had a passionate night, and the next morning everything was back to normal. I even tried to discuss some of the things I had read in the papers about the Invincibles, and Andy showed me her gratitude. The day of the parade arrived, and I made sure Andy and I arrived early to get a spot in the front row. I decided that this was no different from when I saw my sports idols. There was something special about watching someone's success and feeling a sense of awe when being around them. I remember meeting a very famous boxer and starting to stumble over my words. He was nice and friendly, and after meeting him I became an even bigger fan of him. The city's main street was closed and metal barriers were installed along its sides to control the crowd. It soon filled up and we waited for their grand entrance. Andy squeezed my hand tightly and jumped up and down in place with excitement. When they showed up it was a little disappointing. The five superheroes stood on an open platform moving slowly down the street, but they didn't look nearly as impressive in person as they did on the posters. Apparently, makeup and digital effects are doing their job, turning ordinary people into divine figures. Foe was dressed in a red tight suit that emphasized her graceful curves. She controlled fire, summoning and controlling it at will. Ice was wearing a tight-fitting blue suit with armored elements. He controlled the ice who would have thought. Next was Hammer, a real giant. Almost two meters tall, his shoulders were probably a meter wide, and his forearms were thicker than most people's legs. His strength is incredible. He could break through walls. Then there was the Phantom, wearing a black cloak with a deep hood that hid his face. They knew nothing about him, except that he was invisible. And finally, Omega. The leader of the group, he could run at the speed of sound, was as strong as Hammer, and could jump so high it was almost like flying. I heard that he had incredible healing abilities that made him virtually invulnerable. He was tall, with a stern face and dark eyes. To me, his face looked cruel. There was no warmth in his eyes, despite smiling and waving to the crowd. And he screamed as they passed by and waved at the indifferent heroes. When they caught up with us, Omega turned his head and met Andy's gaze. She froze and said, Oh my God, he's looking at me. Ah, uh, yeah, I said, putting my arm around her shoulders. He may be a superhero, but Andy was my girlfriend. His gaze was downright predatory. Then the moment passed and he looked away. I exhaled, but Andy didn't notice my concern. You saw it. Omega looked at me. Damn, I can't believe this. Yeah, that's great, I said without much enthusiasm. The platform moved on, and I was glad that I wouldn't have to see them anymore. Andy was still beaming with delight when the crowd started to leave and I started to get annoyed. Maybe I was jealous for no reason, I don't know. Finally I said, Andy, that's enough. I saw the way he looked at you, but it was creepy, you know. This guy is kind of weird. I understand that he is your idol, but let's get this over with. She let go of my hand. How can you be so jealous? I've never seen you like this. I don't know. Maybe I don't like it when you act like that because of another guy, whoever he is. Imagine if I did the same because of some woman. Andy snorted. You're being ridiculous. The mood soured. Unfortunately, something happened that took our relationship to places I never thought it would go. A man in a black suit and sunglasses approached us as we were leaving. He handed Andy the envelope and said, Open this in private. Before we could ask questions, he turned around and walked away. Our confusion overcame our anger, and we quickly went home. Andy immediately opened the envelope as soon as we closed the door and gasped. Matt, we've been invited to meet the Invincibles tonight. Crap. This is simply the best event of my life. I took the invitation from her hands and read it carefully. We were invited to a reception with the Invincibles at the Regent Hotel at 7 in the evening. I gave it back to her, not feeling any joy or comfort at all. Andy noticed my mood and immediately went on the offensive. Don't tell me you won't go meet them because of some stupid self-doubt. This isn't some stupid insecurity, I'm telling you how I feel, I blurted out. We've always been good at talking through problems and helping each other feel better. 
Now I'm telling you that I didn't like the way Omega looked at you. It was creepy and strange. You're blinded by his fame, and that's not good, Andy. I don't think we should go. We won't miss this opportunity just because you feel weird, she screamed. We're going. What if I refuse? Will you go alone? Andy crossed her arms and looked unsure for the first time. We never did anything without each other. I... This is not like us. Since when have we been fighting? Please, we had a great day today. You saw the Invincibles at the parade. Can we just forget about it? Andy was at a crossroads, but then her face hardened and I realized that she had already made her decision. No, we will not miss this chance. We will go together and you will see that you are wrong. If Omega's look at me scares you, I promise that I will stay away from him and will not leave you even a step. She hugged me and looked at me with her big brown eyes. Please? I sighed. I trusted Andy and we never broke our promises to each other. Okay, but if I say we're leaving, then we're leaving. And I keep your word. Andy jumped up and kissed me. Hore, I promise it will be amazing. And then I'll give you a night of sex. By morning, we will definitely be pregnant. I laughed and hugged her. Okay, sex with you in exchange for a few hours of meeting people in funny costumes. Agree. Some people in my position would probably shout that I should have noticed the warning signs, but the fact is that I noticed them. I knew they were there and I knew what could happen. The problem was that I had boundless faith and trust in my wife. Was it stupid? Perhaps, but I refused to cage her. She listened to my concerns, and we came up with a compromise that was at least somewhat satisfactory for both of us. So, despite my doubts, we went to the hotel. Andy was wearing a nice dress, and I was wearing a shirt and trousers. We looked pretty decent, and when we entered the hall, many people turned around. Andy showed the invitation to the reception staff, and we were led by another man in a black suit to the elevator. The elevator opened directly into a huge room with various seating areas, a bar, a dance floor and floor-to-ceiling windows overlooking the city skyline. Several people, dressed quite elegantly, were already gathered at the bar, mostly couples and women, about Andy's age. We bought ourselves a drink and found our seats, feeling a little unsure of what to do next. The hall gradually filled up, and we met other people who, like us, had received an invitation. We chatted with them until the doors opened and the room fell silent. The Invincibles entered, dressed to the nines. Andy squeezed my hand tightly, craning her neck to get a better look at the heroes. Only the Phantom remained in the same clothes as at the parade, but probably it didn't matter no one knew what he looked like under the cloak. The man in the black suit picked up a small black device and pressed a button. Your phones have been switched off. This is done to preserve the privacy of our heroes. Any attempt to turn them on will result in immediate removal from the hall by our security personnel. Please don't follow them. They will come over if they want to talk to you. Otherwise, enjoy your evening. It was the strangest greeting I've ever heard. Andy and I looked at each other and shrugged. We spent most of the evening talking with other guests. Andy kept looking around, which was almost comical. It was like a nervous tick. Everything was going well until it went bad. We were standing by the window when I felt Andy tense up. I realized that one of the Invincibles was heading towards us. I turned around and saw that it was Omega. My heart sank. Up close, he didn't seem all that intimidating. He was a little shorter than me, I was six foot two, and the toughness I had noticed at the parade was even more pronounced. He barely looked at me, focusing all his predatory gaze on Andy. Hello, I'm Omega, he said, ignoring me and extending his hand to Andy. Damn, I thought. I took his hand and shook it. I'm Matt, and this is my wife Andy. Omega raised an eyebrow in slight surprise. It was the strongest emotion I've seen on his face. Uh, yes, I'm Andy, she said, confused. Would you like to dance with me, Andy? Omega asked still not looking at me. Andy gave me a guilty look. If Matt doesn't mind, I... I interrupted her. Sorry, but Andy and I agreed that we will only dance with each other today. 
Thanks for the offer. Omega's jaw twitched. As you wish. He turned around and left. What the hell was that? Andy hissed in rage. You tell me, I snapped. What happened to your promise? Did you see the way he looked at you? This is all wrong. You promised not to leave my side. What was that? You were so rude. I'm ashamed of you. Are you ashamed of me? My wife is acting like a teenager in love in front of some strange guy. You should have refused him right away, but you didn't. I don't blame you for the fact that he approached, but I blame you for not rejecting him. I was furious. I had never doubted Andy before, but overnight the foundation of my trust in her began to crack. Andy was clearly upset too, but I didn't care. We treated each other coldly but spoke politely for the next few hours. She perked up when Foe and Ice, and later Hammer, approached us, but soon fell back into silent resentment. Finally, I said, I think it's time to go. You met everyone you wanted, we had. An evening. Let's forget this and go home. Andy let go of my hand. No, you can go, but I'll stay. You ruined one of the most special evenings of my life. Andy, what's wrong with you? Listen to yourself. You are acting like a child. I thought our marriage or honeymoon were the most special moments of your life. Before Andy could respond, Omega appeared in front of us again, stepping between us. Would you like to dance? He asked again, ignoring me. I deftly walked around him and said, Andy, let's go. This is getting weird. And he was horrified, not because of Omega's offer, but because of my reaction. Omega said, he's drunk. Get him out of here. Two huge guards grabbed me. Andy, let's go, I screamed as they dragged me away. And he watched helplessly as Omega stepped towards her. And at that moment, our marriage collapsed. I stopped struggling, glancing at her in hopes that she would see the devastation she had just caused. I wasn't even close to being drunk, but I didn't remember being thrown out of the hotel. I wandered aimlessly through the streets of the city, my mind as if in a fog under the yellow light of countless streetlights. An hour later, I found myself in the park near our house and walked past a poster with the image of the Invincibles. I hit him, which only hurt my hand. I wasn't sure if I had broken it, but the pain in my arm was better than what I had inside. I thought I was being attacked when a hand grabbed my arm and sat me down on a park bench. I tried to turn around, but this man was too strong. Sit down, a female voice ordered, surprising me. I was almost sure it was a man. Look, take what you want, I don't have much with me, I said. I looked up and froze. All rational thoughts flew out of my head. Before me stood the embodiment of feminine beauty. Long, shiny white hair, skin white and smooth like marble, red, full lips and high cheekbones. She was the embodiment of sex, a goddess who descended to earth among mortals. She wore a black shiny dress that hugged her figure like liquid night, slim figure with devilish curves in all the right places, including two ample breasts. I, uh, I couldn't put words together. I'm not going to rob you, she said, giving me a smile that made cute dimples appear on her cheeks. Then, why, who? Her smile disappeared, and she said seriously, Tomorrow a man in a black suit will come to your house. You have to sign the papers he gives you, okay? W, what do you mean? I know what happened tonight. I saw everything. I also know that your wife will come home crying at night because she was taken advantage of by Omega. If you want to survive and have a chance at revenge, you must sign the papers. My world collapsed and shattered at the same time. I put my head in my hands. I don't remember the last time I cried, but now the grief that gripped me overwhelmed me completely. I cried over the death of our marriage. I cried over Andy's death. I cried from the death of my heart. The fire of my love for her has faded, and all that remains is a cold emptiness. I looked up and saw that the woman was still sitting in front of me, watching me carefully and sadly. Who are you? I asked. I may be your only friend in this world right now. The next 24 hours will be hell for you, but I promise if you sign those papers, everything will start to get better. She put her hand on my shoulder. I know you have no reason to trust me, Matt, 
Please be strong. It's more than just you or me. She stood up and disappeared into the night. I started crying again. I have never felt so alone in my life. I was sitting on the couch when the car headlights came on in our driveway. I didn't look up. I don't think I had the strength, even if I wanted to. The front door opened and closed. Quick steps, and suddenly Andy rushed to me and burst into tears. Sorry, you were right about everything, she sobbed, leaning on my shoulder. I didn't make the slightest move to console her. Anger filled the void inside me, and I abruptly pushed her away, throwing her onto the sofa. I stood up and looked at her. I didn't know what I expected to see smeared makeup, disheveled hair, a flushed face. But there was nothing. Apart from her tear-stained face, she looked exactly the same as when I left. You ruined me, I said with contempt. You destroyed us. Andy burst into more sobs. It wasn't sex, she screamed. I laughed bitterly. She lowered her head. This was the answer that was enough for me. I felt nauseous and ran to the kitchen sink, vomiting again and again until my stomach was empty. It was less than a second, Andy sobbed from behind. He did it. Security threw me out and took me home. Did he hit you? I asked again. And no, he laughed at me. So it was against your will, I said, wiping my mouth and turning to her. We need to go to the police and then we'll deal with the rest. She collapsed on the floor and screamed. My heart was broken, but I understood that she was worse off now than me. She was a victim. I had to put my emotions aside and focus on helping her. Sorry, Andy. I don't think anyone deserves what happened to you, and I will support you to get through it. But don't expect me to trust you again. But I didn't cheat, she sobbed. No, you didn't cheat, and to be honest, I don't see that as a problem. I'm angry about everything that has happened up to this point. I tiredly rubbed my eyes and helped her get up from the floor. Anger didn't help. It only made the situation worse. Are you injured? Do you need to go to the hospital? I sighed. Okay, let's go. I picked her up and carried her to the car. She clung to me, refusing to let go. At the hospital, I took her to the emergency room, where the doctors examined her. The police were called. I held Andy's hand as she explained what happened, and the policemen's faces gradually turned from surprise to uncertainty. One of them went out and returned a few minutes later. He whispered something to his colleague, and both stood up. It appears that you were aware of what could happen when you decided to stay. We have been instructed by our superiors to warn you that any further complaints may be reviewed by Omega's legal team. They left the hospital before Andy could say another word. The doctor returned with a guilty expression on his face. I'm sorry, but some powerful people have already found out what happened, and it will all be hushed up before it gets bigger. If I were you, I would be careful, otherwise they might decide to fix the problem at the root. She looked at her notes and raised her eyebrows. In a few days you will fully recover. I will recommend a trusted psychologist to help you cope with your trauma. And one more thing. You are pregnant. And he fainted, and I almost fell out of my chair. W what? I asked, stuttering. The doctor brought Andy to his senses before answering. Your wife is pregnant, about three weeks pregnant, apparently. Uh, and after today, will everything be okay with the child? Andy asked hysterically. You need to calm down. Yes, the child is fine, nothing that happened affected him. You are early in pregnancy, so you need to be careful. The situation is difficult, but we will do everything we can to help. And you should also know, we have already had similar cases, and you did not contract any infections. The police were useless, but the doctors gave us recommendations on further actions and care tips. We drove home in silence. Our lives were destroyed, and we were faced with a harsh reality. Andy plunged into some kind of zombie-like state. I hated everything that happened, but I couldn't be mad at her. She didn't want what happened to her. Her greatest fault was that she danced with Omega and did not leave the party on time. We could deal with this later, but not now. She was carrying my child, and I had to put aside my anger and focus on protecting her and taking care of the baby. 
This should have been the happiest moment of our lives, but instead it became the worst. As we entered the house, Andy quietly asked, Why do you want me to sleep in the other room? I'll understand if so. She looked pitiful and depressed. I walked up to her and hugged her. She burst into tears again, like a child, burying her face in my chest. I carefully picked her up and carried her into our bedroom. She stopped crying when we got to the bed, but she was still in her depressed state. I had to take her clothes off and take her to the shower. She started cleaning herself furiously, and I had to stop her. Andy, stop, I shouted. I don't think it could harm the baby, but we shouldn't take any chances, okay? I'm sorry, she cried. Stop it, I said, pulling away from her. I should be the one apologizing, Andy. I didn't react well when you told me. What happened? I couldn't separate your behavior from what happened, and I reacted too emotionally. You have to understand that you are the victim in all of this. You didn't deserve what happened, and I will do anything to help you be whole again. I don't blame you, she replied. What about what happened before? I sighed heavily. That's the problem, right? It seems that what Omega did undoes everything you did before. How can I be angry at someone who has been through this? The truth is that I can't. I have to swallow this. Not only because of what happened, but also because you are carrying our child. Andy's face frowned slightly, a characteristic feature of hers when she was trying to understand something. I've always loved this trait of hers. Okay, she said decisively. You said you couldn't separate one from the other, so we need to do this. Here's what I'm proposing. We work together to fight the problems that will arise because of what Omega did. It will be us against the world, together. The same goes for our child. We are a team, and we will do everything to make him the happiest and healthiest baby in the world. Okay, I agree. Andy smiled for a moment and then added, What about what happened before? It won't be us against the world. It will be, I'm trying to regain your trust. I was blinded by a stupid hobby and behaved badly. Now I understand this all too clearly and I am ashamed of myself. I wish I had realized this earlier. I disrespected you, I was unfaithful, and I broke your heart. So I will do my best to fix this. I know you don't trust me anymore and I accept that. All I need is a little opportunity to prove to you that I can fix everything. Well, you have this opportunity with pregnancy, I replied with a slight smile. And he also smiled for the first time in a long time. I know I have nine months to prove to you that that girl who fell in love with you when she met you in the park still loves you and always will. We slept in the same bed that night. I woke up in the morning with Andy cuddled up against me in the same position we fell asleep in. I tried to get out, but she didn't want to let me go. We didn't talk about the baby yesterday, she whispered. This was supposed to be the happiest moment of our lives, but I ruined everything. I didn't argue with her, so I said, we'll just have to wait until he's born. She smiled. He? Yes, I think we're having a boy. Andy stroked her stomach, although it was still completely flat. I will be glad to see anyone, but you can be the cutest creature in the world. A loud knock on the door took us by surprise, and only then did I remember my conversation with the mysterious woman on the bench. We quickly changed our clothes, and the knocking became louder. I opened the door and saw a man in a black suit with a briefcase. Can I come in? he asked. I have important documents concerning both of you. Remembering the words of the mysterious woman, I stepped aside. The man confidently entered the living room and, turning around, put his briefcase on the coffee table. He took out two documents. He turned to me first. I assume you are aware of what happened last night between your wife and Omega. Yes, I said with hatred. The man didn't express a single bit of emotion. Yes, we were notified of the police report and the hospital visit. These minor inconveniences have already been resolved. You must also understand that there is nothing you can do to bring Omega to justice. If you try, Andy's reputation as a slutty woman will be exposed to the world and Omega's legal team will make sure you are never seen or heard from again. There were no threats in his voice, just cold facts. 
I am here to offer you $3 million, which will be transferred to any account you specify after signing these documents. In exchange, if Andy carries and gives birth to Omega's child, you will raise him as your own until he is old enough to join the Invincibles. He turned to Andy. I assure you, Omega has no desire to date you or have any relationship with you. You are just a donor and incubator for his child. If the baby does not survive the pregnancy, you will never hear from or see us again. The document also contains a confidentiality clause, the violation of which leads to very serious consequences. What if we refuse to sign? Andy asked decisively. Then things will go very, very badly for you. I remembered the words of the mysterious woman. If you want to get out of this alive, and with a chance for revenge, you need to sign the papers. We'll sign, I said before Andy could object. She pulled my hand. We should discuss this, she hissed. Trust me, I said calmly. Andy looked at me for a few seconds, then walked over to the table and signed where the man pointed. He waited for me to do the same and then opened the phone. Done, now we'll fill out the bank details. I wanted to indicate our total bill, but Andy refused. No, I won't touch this money. They will go to your account. I shrugged and gave them my details. The man made another call and then said, The money is in the account. Goodbye. The man left copies of the signed documents on the coffee table and confidently left our house without looking back. What did we just do? Andy screamed in despair. You understand that I'm pregnant and Omega will think that this is his child. We'll do a DNA test to prove it's not his child, and then that'll be the end of it. No, we shouldn't have signed those papers. She shook her head in panic. Now we are connected with them with a huge amount of money in your account. They can destroy or kill us with just a snap of their fingers. You should have thought of that before you did what you did last night. I barked back, and Andy immediately fell silent, her shoulders slumping. You're right, she said chokedly, lowering her eyes. Sorry. Suddenly, a third voice was heard in the room, causing Andy to scream in fear and hide behind me. Well, at least you took my advice, it's already a start. The voice belonged to the mysterious woman, and when I turned around, she was sitting on our couch. She was completely naked, just like last time. Her perfect curves were on full display. Once again, I couldn't help but notice her incredibly attractive body. Phantom? Andy gasped. Yes, and you are Andy, Omega's latest victim. Tell me, was the disrespect for your wonderful husband worth what happened? Phantom looked at Andy defiantly. Andy froze, her face contorted in pain, and she quietly whispered, No. Phantom grinned. It's never worth it, but the realization always comes too late. You have no idea how lucky you are that Matt managed to get you pregnant before Omega did. Most women who go through this either lose the baby or their bodies are so destroyed that they can never have sex again. W, what do you mean? Andy asked, her voice shaking with fear. And why are you here? Phantom leaned back on the couch, her confidence palpable, as if she was in control of the entire situation. But behind this confidence, there was a slight anger directed at Andy. I mean, your husband saved your life when he signed those papers. I heard enough and saw that in all this, you are not as guilty as many others. Matt hasn't had a chance to tell you yet, but I met him last night when he was on the verge of a complete breakdown. It was I who told him to sign the documents. If you had refused, he would have been killed, and you would have been taken away and kept captive until you either gave birth to Omega's child or lost him. After that, you would join your husband in death. I carefully placed Andy on the sofa opposite Phantom and sat down next to him. The Phantom arranged herself so that her body was completely open to our view without even trying to cover herself. Her confidence was literally hypnotizing, but at the same time it caused some embarrassment. Why are you helping us? Andy asked quietly. Phantom lost her confidence for a moment, her gaze softening. Because Omega is evil and he deserves to die. You have no idea how strong your husband is for daring to stand up to him the way he did. I, 
saw Omega do this to women for many years in a row, some by consent, some by force. He does this with his super speed, and everything happens in a split second. The woman does not even have time to realize that she is already pregnant, and she cannot do anything about it. You see, he desperately wants a child. He knows he won't live forever, and he needs someone as strong as him to continue his legacy. But by some monstrous luck, not a single woman has yet been able to carry his child to term. So he looks for a new victim, again and again. You attracted his attention because you were young, healthy, and quite attractive. I frowned, startled by her words. How does he manage to hide this? How can he do such things and get away with it? Phantom smiled bitterly. Because the government is as interested in him having a child as he is. Omega is a weapon of mass destruction. No country would dare go to war with us, knowing that we could send Omega to destroy their cities. I sighed heavily and ran my hand through my hair. Okay, so what now? We can't say this loudly, I'm not going to put Andy in danger. Phantom laughed. Unfortunately, she is already in danger, no matter what you want. You're right, nothing can be done publicly. I've waited a long time for someone like you to dare stand up to Omega. It will be dangerous, and we may die, but if we succeed, the world will be rid of Omega once and for all, and you will get your revenge for what he did to your wife. The Phantom spoke so calmly and confidently that my stomach began to bubble with rage. I imagined killing Omega, and for a moment it brought relief. Okay, I said, clenching my fists. What do we need to do? Nothing yet. Andy has just started her pregnancy, and you both have a lot to discuss and process. The Invincibles remain in the country for now, so I'll keep you posted. But we must be careful. Not a word about our meetings to anyone, and everything we discuss must not leave this house. Andy, it should be obvious. Don't do something stupid like that again. Andy raised her head a little higher. You think I'll put us in danger again? Do you want me to give you a robe? She said, clearly annoyed by her nakedness. Phantom laughed loudly, her chest bouncing with laughter. No, I'm quite comfortable like this. I think Matt wouldn't mind either. She looked at me with a cheeky smile. He's mine, Andy barked. The irony of the situation was not lost on me, and judging by the look on Phantom's face, it wasn't just me. She teased Andy with a smile on her face. Now you understand how Matt felt last night, only he won't choose me over you. Andy weakened, her confidence vanished, and she quietly said, I know. Phantom's face became a little softer. You were right this morning. You need to separate your mistakes from what Omega did. Do what you say and you have a chance. By the way, I had incredible fun watching you make love last night. She winked and disappeared, opening and closing the door behind her as if she had never been there. I can't believe I did all this, Andy said desperately. Two days ago, I was so happy. Yes, I said quietly. Me too. In the following weeks, Andy's mood changed from shell-shocked zombie to overly loving wife. Our lives were torn apart, and I struggled to cope. The pain of Andy's betrayal came from her leaving me. This may seem like a small mistake, but for us, it was a huge mistake. In our entire life, we have never parted with each other. It was always us, from the age of five. I was in a lot of pain, but I couldn't talk to Andy about it because it would make me feel guilty for making her feel worse than she already felt. I was 99% sure I could still trust her, which absolutely sucked because before that night, I was 100% sure. I spent a lot of time in deep thought, trying to make sense of what had happened. I tried to imagine the same situation with Omega and everything that happened to him. I asked myself how different I would feel if we were at a regular club at a party and she acted the same way choosing a random guy over me and dancing with him after I left the club. The truth was that I would have been angry. But wasn't it worth leaving your soulmate because of this? Andy suffered, and even more. Did I think she would do it again? Hell no. What happened was a lightning strike for her and our relationship. We only really disagreed on one issue, invincible. I guess I won this argument, I thought to myself bitterly. Andy came home from work on Friday night and hugged me. 
She held me for a long time and then said, Can we sit at the kitchen table? Of course, I said hesitantly. We sat down across from each other, and Andy gave me one of her, okay, seriously, looks. She pulled out an four envelope from her bag and handed it to me across the table. This is the first step in my attempt to win you back, she said. I took a lie detector test. The results are 99.9% .9 accurate. If you need to talk to the company that carried out the test, their contact details should be there. If not, I can give them to you. Andy, why? She sighed heavily. Because I know what you're thinking, Matt. You question our trust, and rightfully so. How can you believe that I told the truth about what happened? I already betrayed your trust by staying there and dancing with him, especially after you made your fears known and we made promises to each other, so why should you believe anything else I said? I walked in and told them to interrogate me as hard as they could. She started crying and I reached out my hand, but she retreated. No, not yet. Please just read the test. My heart was pounding against my ribs and I pulled out the results. They were displayed in thick binding. It all looked very professional. The first few pages were filled with information about the test, how it was done, and why it was so accurate. The following pages contained basic questions and outcome measures, obvious truths such as, is your name Andy, and obvious lies like, are we sitting on the moon? After that, there were results grouped into questions, answers, and whether Andy was telling the truth or lying. I took a deep breath and continued reading. Before parade day, had you ever had sexual contact with a man other than your husband? No, is it true? Have you ever thought about having sexual contact with a man other than your husband? No. Is it true? Have you ever kissed anyone outside your family other than your husband? No. Is it true? Did you dance with Omega at the party? Yes. Is it true? Have you given Omega any encouragement that you think might make him want to have sex with you? No. Is it true? Have you danced with Omega for more than one song? No. Is it true? Have you considered doing something sexual with Omega at any point during the night? No. Is it true? Have you tried your best to stop Omega from having sex with you? Yes. Is it true? Did you get any pleasure from it? No. Is it true? Have you betrayed your husband? Yes. Is it true? Do you love your husband? Yes. Is it true? There were many more questions, but they were all trying to narrow it down or get Andy to admit that she had been unfaithful in some way. I already believed that she was only dancing with him, but I respected what she was trying to do. Andy, I really appreciate it, but you didn't have to do that, I told her. She shook her head furiously. No, I did it. I hate what I do, Matt. I hate this. Our relationship was so pure, and now it's ruined, and we can never, ever get it back. All I can do is try to rebuild what I destroyed, and that started with me proving to you that what I told Yao Hall, that's the whole truth. He stood up and walked around the table. Andy looked at the table, back in zombie mode. Okay, I'm done with this, I said. Andy screamed. Nuo. Wait, wait, I said, picking her up and holding her close as she cried. Sorry, I expressed myself very, very poorly. I took the envelope and waved it in front of her face. I mean, it's over. Yes, you broke your promise and everything went wrong after that. But you were hurt much, much worse than you should have been. You have always been faithful to me, and the tests prove it. We agreed on nine months, Andy said quietly. I chuckled. And it only took us two weeks. I led her to the sofa. She sat on my lap and snuggled up to me. I'm serious, Andy. I thought a lot, and our love for each other has not changed. I imagined it was the same situation, but without the superheroes, just a normal party. Yes, I am. I would be angry, but leave you. To end us? Hell no. Besides, deep down I know that you will never do anything like that again, and most importantly, you have never thought about cheating. It was just a hobby. I'm sorry I handled everything so poorly, I was probably woefully underprepared to deal with all the emotions I was feeling. My world kind of exploded, and I was trying to make sense of them. But in the end you suffered more. Can you forgive me? Andy kissed me. 
There is nothing to forgive. Could you have handled this better? Perhaps, but I don't think I would know what to do in such a situation. And let's not forget that I screwed up first and got us into this whole mess. She shook her head. I'm still disgusted with myself. I also thought a lot. And do you know why I saw them in this light? I spent too much time reading things on the internet and going on social media. All this, this is all fake. Nobody posts bad photos on their social media, right? They only publish the best ones in the best lighting with the best filter. I believe that there were more of them, so I deleted mine, by the way. I shook my head. Andy, you didn't have to do that for me either. No, I mostly did it for myself. It's like a veil has been lifted, and I've seen the ugly truth that you could see all along. Social media is a cancer that eats away the minds of society and turns them into zombies, stumbling over the latest trend. Invincible is just a trend that makes powerful people a lot of money, and I don't want to expose myself to that anymore. She put her hand on my chest. Everything I need beats right here. I took her hand and placed it on her stomach. And here too. Her face broke into the most beautiful smile. Yeah, our little world just got bigger by one, didn't it? After this day, our affairs improved significantly. I didn't think it was possible, but Andy and I found a new, deeper connection in each other. The kid helped, but mostly he faced a mistake followed by a terrible crime and came out the other side stronger than ever. We always prided ourselves on being able to discuss things with each other. This was at the core of our relationship. Our conversations about that fateful night did not end that day, but we continued to discuss and learn from her experience, building a stronger foundation of our love, strengthened by experience. Neither of us blamed each other for our mistakes either. We really went through it. There was another wonderful quality about us. When we forgive, we truly forgive. This did not stop the discussions, but there were no negative emotions in them, only love, support, and learning. Our personal lives suffered because of the obvious. After the first night, we didn't have sex for a long time, which was unheard of for us. I really wanted this, but I didn't know how to approach Andy. She went through a traumatic experience, and I had to put her needs before mine. Everything changed one Saturday evening. I finished the book I was reading and Andy was upstairs taking a bath, not too hot because of the pregnancy, but enough to relax her. I was just finishing up when I heard Andy call my name. I put a bookmark in the book and left it on the table. Andy, everything is fine. I called as I walked up the stairs. To the bedroom. I walked in and my mouth hit the floor. Andy lay naked on the bed in all her glory. We are stronger than ever. But there is another side to our relationship that we need to get back, she said. The following months were amazing, but the terrifying threat from the Invincibles and Omega remained. We felt helpless, like a leaf caught in a cyclone. We had no idea what would happen to us and where they would throw us next. We found out about this late in the evening at a very inconvenient time. We were in the living room. A phantom appeared in the room, completely naked and watching us. Andy screamed and pulled our blanket over us, making Phantom laugh. It's a little late now. I was watching you. She licked her lips. Keep your tongue out of my husband, Andy growled. I laughed and pulled her into my arms. I kissed her. The ghost sat down on the sofa opposite us and sighed sadly. You're right, I'm really sorry, I think. I'm just jealous of what you have. I, I watched you a lot, but you didn't know. What? Andy was crying. Some of the phantom steel has returned. I don't apologize for this. I made sure that no one came to kill, kidnap, or harm you. You know that now you can become a target for foreign countries, right? If they think you. If you're carrying Omega's spawn, they'll want to find you and kill you, or steal the baby to use as their own weapon. In the months of bliss we had experienced, the enormity of what we had to face had dimmed a little. One conversation with Phantom was enough for everything to return to normal. So why can't we just prove that the child is not his? Andy said, repeating my thoughts when we signed the documents. Because he will most likely want to make you a baby again. He would likely view the fact that you were already pregnant with Matt's child as his biggest failure 
and an unforgivable insult. He considers himself a perfect person, invincible, only Matt kind of one. What should we do? Andy was crying. First you calm down, then go and take a shower so we can talk. We shower together, Andy snapped, her mood instantly changing. She grabbed my hand and threw a throw at Phantom. And cover yourself. After the shower, we returned to the living room, rested and dressed. So what can we do? I asked Phantom. She leaned forward and her tilt dropped slightly, revealing her incredible cleavage. I pretended not to notice and used all my willpower to maintain eye contact. Andy may have been the perfect woman and the love of my life, but I was still a human man. You take pictures and everything is fine. Team Omega will likely be watching you throughout your pregnancy, so when you leave the house, act like the perfect loving couple. The problem will arise when Andy gives birth. They will do it. A DNA test will find out that your child is not Omega's, and then he will demand retribution. It's kind of like reverse cuckolding. He tried to take your woman, but they ended up cuckolding him. She grinned. I like it. Okay, what should we do then? How can we stop him? I asked. That's when things get dicey. He will deliberately try to take you away from Matt, possibly in front of him, like at the party earlier. If that doesn't work, he'll do it the second way, which you've already tried. We'll avoid the party, Andy quickly told Phantom. Is there somewhere we can hide? He will find you. There is no safe place in the world. No, I want you to go to the party and... No, Andy shouted. I'm not putting myself or Matt through this, again. No, I want you to go to the party, Phantom continued. No, Andy shouted. I'm not going to put myself and Matt in danger like that again. Stop yelling and listen to me for a minute, Phantom exclaimed. You're screaming like an angry seagull. Andy leaned back on the couch and I hugged her. I'm with Andy, I said. Going to a party means putting her right under the gun. Andy winced when she heard my comparison. Sorry, I added. Believe me, this is the only way. And, she added when Andy opened her mouth, I won't let you get hurt again. Others are in this too. Other invulnerables. Foe, ice, hammer. Yes, they all support me. Why? Andy asked. Phantom blinked rapidly, her voice trembling. Because when Omega first decided to create his offspring, who do you think he used first? You and foe, Andy whispered. Phantom nodded. Yes, and we are difficult to kill, so you can imagine the pain we went through at birth. But do you know what was worse? Our children did not survive, and we survived. She turned away and wiped her eyes. Sorry, Andy said quietly. She walked up to Phantom and hugged her. And now neither I nor do will ever be able to have children again. Phantom whispered. He took this away from us. And then he laughed. He said that we are as weak as everyone else. She looked up and tears rolled down her cheeks. So trust me, I will never let this happen to you again, but it needs to be stopped. Andy hugged her and then came back to me. Matt, it has to be our decision, she said. He needs to be stopped, I replied. I'm just scared for your safety and for the safety of our child. We are ordinary people. How can we help stop him? Phantom wiped away her tears and her eyes lit up. Because he doesn't see you as a threat. This would be his biggest and last mistake. In the following months, Phantom became a regular guest in our home. She said it was to protect us, but I suspected there was more to it than that. After a tense start to their relationship, Andy and Phantom became good friends. I think Andy felt really bad for Phantom that she couldn't have children, and she realized how close she was to being in her situation or worse. For her part, Phantom left us a change of clothes. She couldn't appear invisible with her clothes on, so she changed upstairs every time before joining us. Andy relaxed in her presence, and they even began to enthusiastically discuss the pregnancy. I think Phantom lived through Andy, and neither of us objected to that. The plan was risky and terrifying, like a script from the worst horror movies. But Andy and I were determined. The more we got to know Phantom, the more we realized how badly Omega had damaged her, along with countless other women. 
I wanted to meet with the other Unbreakables to discuss the details of the plan, but it was too risky. They couldn't come and go from our house unseen, and if Team Omega found out that one of them was visiting us, the whole plan would collapse like a house of cards. Phantom said they conveyed their sincere gratitude to us for taking the risk. One morning I came downstairs and saw Phantom sitting on the sofa and crying. She was bent over something, peering intently. She didn't hear me, so I went upstairs again and closed several doors noisily to let her know I was there. I deliberately hesitated while walking downstairs, and when I entered the living room, Phantom had already pulled herself together. Good morning, I said cheerfully. Everything is fine? She nodded and tried to smile. Yeah, I just wanted to check on Andy and our little Bob, she replied. I don't know why, but one day Phantom started calling our baby Bobby, and the nickname stuck. She's upstairs, getting ready, she'll come down soon, I answered. Phantom followed me into the kitchen and leaned against the countertop, watching me prepare breakfast. I'm sorry for watching you then, she suddenly said. I laughed, trying to laugh it off. It's okay. You have a great ass and you both have perfect bodies, but it was more than that. That is, in this too, but not quite. I think I was just incredibly jealous of you too. You are made for each other. There's nothing dirty about it. It's as if she was born only for you and you were born only for her. I poured her a cup of coffee and passed it across the table. Her words warmed my heart. That's exactly what Andy and I were like. It's always been like this, I said with a smile. When did you first meet? You know, I don't remember much from my childhood. Memories become confused and erased over time. But Andy, I remember the first time I saw her as clearly as if it was yesterday. We were both five years old and Andy's family had just moved into the house next door. We were in the park with my father, and my mother volunteered to show the new neighbors the way. I was sitting on a swing and my father was pushing me. And then I saw her. Dark hair, big brown eyes, and a little red dress. My mom introduced us and then left us to play while she and dad met the new neighbors. I smiled and pointed to the photo of Andy and I holding hands. She took my hand and asked if I would like to become her friend. Twenty years later, she still holds my hand, and we have remained friends ever since. Phantom was silent for a while. I wish I had something like that, but now I'll never experience it. Before I could answer, Andy came into the room. Phantom's face immediately brightened, and she hugged Andy. How is our little Bobby doing? She asked, placing her hand on her stomach. He was fidgeting all night. How are you? I left them chatting in the kitchen while I went back to the living room to get ready for work. We never touched the millions that were sitting in my bank account. This money seemed defiled, as if if we spent it, we would be admitting everything that had happened. So we continued to live as usual. Andy was on maternity leave, and Phantom spent most of the day with her. Initially, this prospect terrified me, but after we got to know her better, Phantom's presence brought me only peace. She could take care of Andy better than even I could. I was already packing my things to go to work when I noticed something strange on the coffee table where Phantom was sitting. A corner of the photograph was sticking out from under the magazine, as if it had been hastily shoved there. I looked back towards the kitchen to see that Phantom and Andy were still busy talking. I picked up the magazine and realized why Phantom was crying. It was a photo of our baby's ultrasound something Phantom would never have. My heart sank painfully for her. Moreover, I noticed that our baby really looked like a little bobcat. No one will ever be able to fully explain the feeling you get when you see your child for the first time. Suddenly, and completely the center of the universe shifts. For me, it was as if all the stars in the universe had gone out, leaving only two diamonds sparkling against this dark sky. The only people left in my life were Andy and our beautiful baby. When I held him to my chest, it must have been like a bird taking flight for the first time. First a terrible fall and fear, and then pure joy and delight in a new world. Andy looked dazzling, albeit tired. I was so proud of her. She was a true warrior, and now she is a mother. I held her and our child, and at that moment it seemed to me that I was holding the entire universe in my hands. We named him Benjamin, after Andy's grandfather. 
Our moment of happiness was shattered when three men in black suits burst into the room with guns drawn. I threw myself in front of Andy and Benjamin, blocking them with myself. The men stopped and pointed their guns at me. We are taking the child for a DNA test, one of them said calmly. No, Andy screamed in despair. Matt, don't let them take our son. You won't take him anywhere, I said, looking around in search of at least some kind of weapon. I felt a hand on my shoulder and heard phantom whisper in my ear. I'll stay with Benjamin. I promise I won't hurt him. The man in the center of the group, remaining unperturbed, added, If you don't move, we'll shoot you. Andy was crying behind me, but I heard Phantom whispering something to her, calming her down. Okay, Andy sobbed. I slowly stepped aside and watched helplessly as the men took Benjamin away. They handled him carefully, but it was most likely because they were afraid of hurting him if he turned out to be Omega's child. There was a rage inside me that I had never felt before, but Andy's moans quieted that anger, allowing me to regain clarity. I hugged her, but hatred was still boiling inside, ready to explode at any moment. The phantom is watching over him, I whispered in Andy's ear, afraid that someone might be listening. She won't let him do anything. Andy hugged me tighter. Matt, she whispered, we will kill Omega. I will not rest until this creature suffers just like us. I know, I replied, allowing my rage to come out. We hugged and waited until the men came back. One of them abruptly thrust Benjamin into Andy's arms, and only the invisible hands of the Phantom holding me stopped me from pouncing on him. We will take revenge, Phantom hissed in my ear. But not now. I started to breathe deeply and stepped back. The man looked at me impudently and asked, problems. You do understand that Omega won't stop until she gets pregnant again, right? Phantom's hands squeezed me tighter, holding me back from throwing. But then I heard a soft sound behind me, my son. I immediately calmed down and Phantom let me go. I turned to see Benjamin nestled on my wife's chest. The anger retreated deep inside, like a predator lurking in the dark. These people will pay for their actions, but not now. A fourth man in a suit entered the room and said, We will contact you, and don't try to hide. They left, and the room became a little brighter. Instead of staying in the hospital, our new family left as quickly as possible. I held the car door longer than necessary so that Phantom could get inside. We were so afraid of being overheard that we didn't say a word until we got home. Carrying a newborn baby for the first time is a special and scary feeling. Suddenly, every bump and turn becomes a threat. I tried to make the car seem to float down the road without disturbing my little source of life in the back seat. At home, I called my family and friends and sent the necessary photographs. Our parents insisted on coming as soon as possible to see Benjamin, so it turned out to be a long and exhausting day. Everyone instantly fell in love with him, and I knew Benjamin would be incredibly spoiled for all his birthdays and holidays. When they finally left, Andy and I exhaled at the same time. We smiled at each other and sat down on the sofa with Benjamin, still not believing what we were holding in our arms. We created it, I said with admiration, looking at Andy. Yes, he's perfect, isn't he? She said, touching his face softly. Then she kissed me and raised her head. Phantom, you can come out. I heard movement upstairs, and a few minutes later, she appeared in front of us. Sorry, I just wanted to give you some privacy with the baby. It's okay, you're part of our family now, Andy said. Do you want to hold him? Her eyes filled with tears as she slowly walked over and took Benjamin into her arms. So many emotions flashed across her face. Happiness, delight, love, pain, sadness. All these feelings were replaced one after another in a storm. He's perfect, Phantom whispered, looking at him with love and pure agony. Andy yawned and Phantom added, I can keep an eye on him if that's okay. You can rest and I'll wake you up if he needs feeding or anything. I understand if. No, Andy said. We trust you and I seriously say, you are now part of our family. Are you sure you don't mind keeping an eye on him? Phantom couldn't take her eyes off Benjamin. No, I can look at him all night. Andy kissed her forehead. Thank you for what you did today. 
Matt and I couldn't have done it without you. Phantom's face hardened again. They will pay, I promise, every one of them, and no one will ever harm little Bobby. I thanked her and we went upstairs. We quickly showered and collapsed into bed, knowing that our lives had changed forever for the better. Having a newborn is one of the most challenging yet most rewarding experiences. Feeding, sterilizing bottles, changing diapers, washing clothes, expressing milk, night feedings, all this was an endless cycle of worries. Two things made my life much easier. The first was, of course, Andy. She literally immersed herself in her maternal role as if it were inherent in her nature. I'd heard about maternal instinct before, but I never really thought about it until I saw how Andy handled taking care of Benjamin to perfection. She intuitively understood what he needed, how to hold him, how to calm him down. It took me longer to get used to being a father. I was a nervous parent, but with her calm guidance, I gradually learned to be a good dad. The second thing that made life much easier was the phantom. She helped Andy around the house washed bottles, looked after Benjamin, even changed diapers. It was like having a nanny who was also a superhero. Phantom and Andy became best friends, and Phantom herself became a second mother to Benjamin. She simply adored him. I thought Andy might be jealous or feel that Phantom's interference was too much, but their friendship and understanding of what Phantom was going through changed her perception. I was glad that many of the chores around the house and caring for the child were taken off my shoulders, leaving me more time to just hug my son. One day, while Phantom was feeding Benjamin from Andy's milk bottle, I finally decided to ask the question that had been on my mind for a long time. Phantom, how can you spend so much time here? Isn't the government worried about you disappearing? She smiled. That's one of the advantages of being invisible. When we're not abroad, I just disappear and do what I want, away from the unbreakables. When they need me again, I return. They have long been accustomed to the fact that I am often absent when I return to the country. So for several months, the four of us settled into a strange but happy family life. Until there was a knock on the door. I was just finishing making breakfast, and Andy and Phantom were in the living room. I heard Phantom's clothes fall to the floor and Andy shouted, Matt, can you open the door? I crossed the room while Andy hid Phantom's clothes under the sofa. I opened the door and two men from the hospital were standing on the threshold. They grinned smugly and extended an invitation to me. You and your wife have been invited to a private meeting with the Unbreakables in a week on Saturday. Andy and I have already discussed and rehearsed all of our options for dealing with the Phantom. This was the first step of the plan. From that moment we began to fight for our lives and for revenge. My face turned red with anger. Get the hell out. We won't go anywhere with you. I tried to close the door, but one of the men indifferently pulled out a gun and pointed it at me. Omega works well. You and your wife can come as guests or we will do it the way I prefer. We will kill you, your child, and then take your wife. I forced my heart to slow down. I lowered my head and began to sob. Please, don't do this. Why, you can get your money back. I sobbed as if I was completely broken. The man laughed roughly and put his weapon away. You're pathetic. Be there on time. I let out a heartbreaking sob and they left. As soon as the door closed, I straightened up and stopped sobbing. Andy looked at me with one eyebrow raised as Phantom pulled her t-shirt over her head. Wasn't it a little overacted? Asked Phantom. Do you think they bought it? I asked. Um, yes, I think so, she answered sarcastically. Her smile immediately disappeared. Well, there's no turning back now. Are you ready? Andy and I nodded. The night of the private party, we took Benjamin to Andy's parents. Saying goodbye to him was very emotional for both of us. This was the first time we had been apart from him since he was born, and there was a chance we would never see him again. In case the worst happened, we wrote him a letter and transferred those millions into his account so that he could use them when he grew up. Andy wore a sparkling silver dress, and I wore a simple shirt and trousers. The only word I could use to describe Andy that evening was seductive. Her figure was slightly rounded after pregnancy, but this only added to her charm. 
Her breasts were full and heavy, and her hips moved with a fluid grace that had never been seen before. She was a sexuality personified. We haven't had sex since Benjamin was born, and I'm seriously thinking it's time to fix that. The party took place in the same hotel as before, but this time we were the only ones invited. Those same men in black suits stood nearby, their grins and lustful glances directed at Andy, leaving no doubt about their intentions. We squeezed each other's hands tightly, drawing strength from this touch. The rest of Team Unbreakable was already there, and we tried our best to look calm, although inside we were filled with fear. The longer we waited, the more I began to regret our agreement to this plan, when suddenly Phantom approached us. She was wearing a white dress that barely contained her breasts, with a slit that revealed an immodest amount of leg. She extended her hand and said, I am Phantom. We exchanged greetings, and she disappeared into the crowd. Uh, what's going on? I asked one of the men. He laughed. You will wait here until Omega arrives, and then the fun will begin. Well, I think it will begin, Andy answered with a seductive intonation. I grimaced, feigning humiliation, and she squeezed my hand even harder. Omega showed up an hour later. I don't know if he did this on purpose to show his power, but he slowly walked into the hall, as if everything belonged to him. I hated him. His dark eyes met mine, and there was a challenge in them, a challenge he knew I would lose. He knew that no one could resist him. He was the master of the world and could take whatever he wanted. The easy way or the hard way? He asked me, his eyes skimming over Andy's body. The easy way, I answered weakly. Okay, I promise she'll like it. He grabbed Andy, and she screamed as he pulled her towards him. He tried to kiss her, but she turned her head away. No, I shouted. I rushed at him, but he grabbed me by the throat with a steel grip. He laughed. I thought you'd try something stupid. This makes everything even better. Any last words for her? I saw stars, and the pressure in my head was unbearable. I tried to speak, but I couldn't say a word. He loosened his grip. What did you say? I did my job, I whispered. What kind of work? I grinned. Distract you. Distract from whom? The phantom appeared behind him. From us. Why are you doing this? I saved the world. We saved the world. Phantom let go of his head and leaned towards him. You took my world. She screamed in his face, sobbing and shaking with rage. I will never be able to have a child because of you. And he walked over and put her hand on Phantom's shoulder, comforting her. And my life was destroyed because of you, she added coldly. Omega tried to look at Hammer and Ice, hoping for support. Please, you understand that I did this to save the world. Hammerhead shook his head, his voice low and muffled. I love Phantom like a little sister. You hurt her, and it's unforgivable. Ice, squeezing Foe's hand, said, I love Foe. You deprived us of the opportunity to have a family. His voice sounded cold, like the ice he created. He glanced at the five black-suited guards who were trying to sneak out of the room. I won't let you go either. He waved his hand, and the door leading outside instantly froze, sealing them inside. Well, I said, squatting next to the immobilized Omega, there is only one part of your body left that must be destroyed so that your evil never touches this world again. And I know three people who want to get even with her. I stepped back, leaving him on the floor in front of the three women. We left the hotel building as calmly as we entered. But now it's over. No one else will suffer because of him. And he held my hand tightly as we followed Hammer and Phantom, who gave the idea of where to send Omega, the place where the fate that he most feared awaited him eternal loneliness and suffering. We got into a large SUV and Hammer confidently led us away from the city. There was tense silence in the car. Everyone was mulling over what had happened, realizing what we had just done. The unknown loomed ahead, but there was one thing we were sure of. No one else would suffer at the hands of Omega. Phantom looked out the window, her face reflecting a mixture of relief and sadness. Despite her outward resilience, she was going through a lot inside. Andy leaned towards her and said quietly, You did it. Now he will never be able to harm another woman again. Phantom nodded, 
but her eyes remained sad. Yes, but how many lives have already been destroyed, and none of us will ever regain what we lost, she whispered. But at least now the world is free from this monster. And he hugged me, her face glowing with relief and joy. Now we could move on with our lives without fear for ourselves or our son. It's over, she whispered in my ear. Yes, it's over, I answered, squeezing her in my arms. Months have passed since Omega disappeared. The world gradually came to its senses, although rumors and conspiracy theories about his disappearance spread in government circles. But none of them reached us. Andy and I disconnected from social media and chose to enjoy life with our family and our new friends. We kept in touch with Hammer, Ice, and Foe. They came to visit, and every time Benjamin was the center of their attention. For all of us, it was the beginning of a new life. One day, during one of our barbecues, Andy and I decided to surprise Phantom with something we had been thinking about for a long time. Can you watch the grill, buddy? I asked Hammer. Of course, he smiled, despite his stern appearance, his character was kind and friendly. Although if you want, foe can fry the meat faster with his fire. No way, I laughed. Believe me, meat is much better if it is cooked in the usual way. I patted him on the shoulder and walked over to Andy, who was sitting next to Phantom, holding Benjamin in her arms. Phantom, Andy and I have something we want to ask you, I said, sitting down next to them. Phantom frowned but nodded. Of course, ask. Andy happily handed her a card that had Benjamin's tiny handprint on it. What is this? Phantom asked in surprise. Open it and find out, Andy said with a smile. Phantom opened the card, her eyes darted over the lines, and her facial expression changed first to surprise and then to awe. The postcard said, Dear Phantom, you have taken care of me since I was born. You protected and loved me, and I love you with all my heart. You make me feel safe and surrounded by love. Therefore, I would like to ask you to become my godmother. I hope you agree, and my mom and dad really want it too. With love, Bobbick. Phantom slowly handed Benjamin to me, tears welling in her eyes. She covered her face with her hands and burst into tears. Andy hugged her. So what do you say? Do you agree? She asked softly. Phantom raised her face, smiling through her tears. Of course I agree. You have no idea what this means to me. This is the happiest day of my life. Andy and I laughed and hugged her. Now she was not just part of our family, she became a real godmother for Benjamin. Several years passed and our lives continued to prosper. Phantom, Ice, Hammer, and Foe visited us often, and each visit was a holiday for everyone. Phantom had finally retired from her superhero life and settled near us, often spending time with Benjamin and us. Our lives finally became what we always wanted filled with love, peace and happiness, and nothing could threaten our small but strong world anymore.